Hey guys, Eric here. Today we'll be making a teardrop vase. To start off this vase, I first create a small bubble of clear glass. Then I'll have my assistant Christian bring me over a very, very hot blob of densely colored pink glass. Once I've attached it to the end of my bubble, I'll squish it on a little bit and reheat the piece. I'll slowly start to squish and smear the pink glass over that clear bubble with one of my tools. Once the color's been evened out, I'll blow a little bit into the pipe just to make sure the bubble's still there. Like an actual bee. It's a honey. It's a honey bee. At this point, my bubble's cooled down enough to where I can dip it back into the furnace to get another layer of glass. We call this process gathering. Inside this furnace, there's only clear glass, no color. Now you might not have been able to tell, but when I first came out of the furnace, the layer of clear glass I had around my piece was not very even. So to even it out, I used one of these wooden tools called blocks. They're made of cherry wood, and they're very good at shaping the glass without scarring or leaving any residue behind. <laughs> Going for one more layer of glass, this will be the last substantial addition of glass to the piece. Chunky. Oh, wow. Christian's got a small chunk of purple glass he's shaping and heating, getting ready for the body wrap of the piece. So Christian's almost ready to bring the body wrap over. There we go. There's the pattern added to the outside of the piece. Now after I add that colored strip of glass, I heat the piece up really, really aggressively so the surface gets really liquidy and runny. And if I do it right, my tool sinks into the glass and easily flows through nice and very little resistance. Now some of you may have wondered why I don't wear gloves. Now gloves are really nice when the piece is big and hot, but other than that, I try not to wear them. They tend to get in the way of my tool usability and my turning ability, which can cause the piece to suffer in quality. Now that we have the pattern all set up and ready, it's time to start inflating it. Now 
I want to make sure the bottom of my vase doesn't get too thin while I'm blowing it out, so I like to roll it on the table to help cool it off and make sure it's the coldest part of the piece as I'm blowing. Crazy! This wet rag you've seen me use a few times is actually made of newspaper. This tool allows me to get really close and intimate with the glass, let me to feel and shape it as I inflate it. It's a very fun and versatile tool you can use. A little warning for headphone users here, the air gun I'm about to use is really loud, so you might want to turn it down just a little bit. Now that the piece is the size I want, I need to just flatten the bottom. So I'll use a propane torch to spot heat the area I want to flatten, and then gently heat the piece and squish it flat with one of my wooden tools. Here comes that dreaded air gun again. So at this step, I'm pretty happy with how the bottom half of the piece looks, so I'm going to transfer it to another rod so I can work on the top half. So to flip the piece around, at this point I just need to attach a new rod to the bottom of the piece and break my piece off the end of my blowpipe. Maybe a lot off in the face. That's fine. It's giving me albino zebra. <laughs> Now that the piece is flipped around, it allows me to heat the top exclusively without heating the bottom up. This allows me to get the top really, really hot so I can stretch it as tall as I want. Now you may notice that purple line of glass added to the surface of the glass is starting to turn silver here. This happens because the metals in the glass that are used to color it are brought to the surface of the glass when you heat it with this specific type of flame. Now that I've built heat up in the top of the vase, I'm going to use my tweezers to start pulling the neck longer and longer.
ready to stretch the vase out now. Christian's going to insert a metal rod into the hole at the top, so when I squeeze down and stretch with my tool here, it doesn't close the top of the vase off. If that happened, the bubble would start to collapse and deflate on itself pretty aggressively. break off the excess at the top and clean it up a little bit and we're pretty much done here. I mentioned earlier that colored glass has metals in them. Some of the metals that are used in colored glass can be really expensive. For example, the pinks and purples I used in this vase have a lot of gold in them, so they tend to be a lot more expensive than other colors. A little unsure if this vase was going to be too tall to fit into the oven at the end. We've got one last trick, we just gotta heat up the punty and drop a little bit of water on it and when I give it a little bonk it should pop right off. Ooh. And into the oven it goes. This oven's at around 900 degrees and slowly lets the piece cool down once I'm done making my bases. Let the glass cool too fast, it'll break and shatter, and I would be unhappy about that to say the least. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more like it, drop a like, comment, subscribe, all that helps, and lets me know you want to see more.